Hello and welcome everyone to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam aka Himvar and today I have another poem for you because it's Poetry Thursday. Okay, and along with Poetry Thursday, it's also Sword and Sorcery November. I'm still staying strong on, staying focused on Sword and Sorcery. Now, I'm not committed 100% to that. I might read something else that's not Sword and Sorcery, but I have a pretty good stack to go from that is pretty varied, and so I think I'll stick to it. But anyways, like I shared last week, which was Samaria by Robert E. Howard, I do have another poem today, also by Robert E. Howard. In this case, it's about a different Sword and Sorcery character of his, Solomon Cain who's actually older than Conan, or meaning the character was created before Conan, and he is a Puritan. I actually have not read any of his stories yet, which I feel like I really should, but I just started, I just finished reading my first things by Howard, and I thought they were amazing, and I really need to fit some in more in before the year is out. Whether that's more Conan, maybe some Cole the Conqueror, or maybe Solomon Kane. Anyways, I had asked on the Sword and Sorcery Discord that I'm in, which I may link below if anyone wants to join. It's a great discussion on Sword and Sorcery. Everyone, well, lots of people there know what they're talking about. They definitely know what they're talking about more than I do. A lot of them are also published Sword and Sorcery authors, whether that's just in small magazines or have their own novels. Now this, this poem is 11 stanzas. I'm just gonna read through it. I'll, I'll share some brief thoughts, but I'm really just gonna try to keep this video rather short. And again, this is Solomon Cain's homecoming. The white gold wheeled above the cliffs, the air was slashed with foam, the long tides moaned along the strand when Solomon Cain came home. He walked in silence strange and dazed through the little Devon town. His gaze like a ghost came back to life, roamed up the streets and down. The people followed wonderingly to mark his spectral stare, and in the tavern silently they thronged about him there. He heard as a man hears in a dream the worn old rafters creak, and Solomon lifted his drinking jack and spoke as a ghost might speak. There sat Sir Richard Greenville once, in smoke and flame he passed, and we were one to fifty-three, but we gave them blast for blast. From crimson dawn to crimson dawn we held the dawns at bay. The dead lay littered on our decks, and our masts were shot away. We beat them back with broken blades till crimson ran the tide. Death thundered in the cannon smoke when Richard Greenville died. We should have blown our hull apart and sank beneath the main. The people saw upon his wrist the scars of the racks of Spain. Where is Bess? said Solomon Cain. Woe that I caused her tears. In the quiet churchyard by the sea she has slept these seven years. The sea wind moaned at the window pane, and Solomon bowed his head. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and the fairest fade, he said. His eyes were mystical deep pools that drowned unearthly things, and Solomon lifted up his head and spoke of his wanderings. Mine eyes have looked on sorcery in dark and naked lands, Horror born in the jungle gloom and death on the pathless sands. And I have known a deathless queen in a city as old as death, where towering pyramids of skulls her glory witnesseth. Her kiss was like an adder's fane with the sweetness Lilith had, and her red-eyed vassals howled for blood in that city of the mad. And I have slain a vampire shape that sucked a black king white, and I have roamed through grisly hills where dead men walked at night, and I have seen heads fall like fruit in a slaver's barracoon, and I have seen winged demons fly all naked in the moon. My feet are weary of wandering, and age comes on apace. I fain would dwell in Devon now, forever in my place. The howling of the ocean pack came whistling down the gale, and Solomon came threw up his head like a hound that sniffs the trail. Adown the wind, like a running pack, the hounds of the ocean bayed, and Solomon Cain rose up again and girt his Spanish blade. In his strange cold eyes, a vagrant clean grew wayward and blind and bright, and Solomon put the people by and went into the night. A wild moon rode the wild white clouds, the waves and white crest flowed. When Solomon came, went forth again, no man knew his road. They glimpsed him etched against the moon, where clouds on hilltops thinned. They heard an eerie echoed call that whistled down the wind. Now that poem is now in the public domain. I believe that was published in 1936 in... I'm not exactly sure where. I don't believe it was a Weird Tales, though. Anyways, that is a little story about Solomon Cain. Like I said, I haven't read anything, but I thought that this was a nice story that shows us that he's already, that he's already weathered a lot, that he's already faced many a foe, and that he would just like some rest back home in Devon. And as soon as he expresses that, that desire, he runs off again because he's needed. And I think that's a really nice poem. 
Again, I would like more context. I would like to know. I would like to have read Solomon Kane's stories, and I am sure I will someday. But I thought I'd just share that poem with you this Thursday. And I hope you're having a good Poetry Thursday. Open up a poetry book, read a poem to yourself, or recite it to some family. Maybe try to memorize one. Or even make your own video about Poetry Thursday. Or And if not, at least thanks for watching. Uh, that I feel like listening to a me or side poem counts in some ways. So anyways, this has been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.